Hi, and welcome to the Fantasy Sports Debacle. My name is David Love, and today we're going to be talking about our 6 through 10 receivers. Uh, and then after we talk about them, we're going to bring on uh, Jeremiah Hamilton to debate certain points uh, with these receivers and talk about whether or not they should be in the list. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fire through the first three pretty quickly because they're going to be on everyone's top 10 list, and the last two is... I, I feel like I need to explain myself a little bit. I, I, let me apologize. I don't need to explain myself for these guys because these guys are deserving. But I feel like some people aren't as high as them, so I need to prove my point. So the first person is Keenan Allen at number six, uh, ADP of 16th off the board overall, wide receiver six being drafted. Uh, he should be drafted in the second round. Played all 16 games last year. Uh, you know, top five in receptions, targets, yards. Um, he had 27% target share. He's a monster. You know, he ended the game last or the, the season last year uh, on a tremendous uh, run. In the first 10 games last year, he got 100 yards or more uh, in a game only twice and only scored one touchdown in the first 10 games. Okay, so from week 11 or the, the last six games, he had five touchdowns, 105 yards in a game or more four times in those six games and at, a, at nine or more catches in four of those six games. So basically he destroys the last six games of the season. Uh, Hunter Henry being out for the year adds even more looks to him. I just feel like who's going to take away the targets from this guy? Um, he could easily be drafted in the top five for receivers. I wouldn't hate that whatsoever. Moving on to number seven, Michael Thomas, 25 years old. Uh, his young guy, you know, in the New Orleans offense, being picked 15th overall off the board, wide receiver 5. Um, I think he should be drafted in the mid to end of the second round. Played all 16 games last year. Uh, third in the league of receptions. Uh, sixth in yards. Five touchdowns only. That's the issue with Michael Thomas. Same thing with Julio Jones that we talked about in the last video. Um, the thing about it, though, is that Mark Ingram is going to be out for the first four games of the year. Um, and that's going to be very crucial for Michael Thomas because uh, Sean Payton already said that Kamara is not going to get this huge workload that people have been expecting from him. Um, I don't think that uh, he's going to be a ridiculous receiver in the sense of finishing wide receiver one on the year, but I think he could easily finish top five. I, so I think his ceiling's kind of capped in that offense just due to the fact that their defense is better uh, this year and last year opposed to years in the past. Um, and it's not, and you get Alvin Kamara, who basically destroyed the league last year, and I expect that to continue. So they're not going to have to pass the ball as much. But number seven receiver for sure. Uh, number eight is going to be AJ Green, uh, oldest guy on my list, uh, tw being picked 20th off the board, wide receiver eight. Uh, same thing with Michael Thomas, mid to end second round. Once again, played all 16 games last year. Um, AJ Green started off the year. Uh, kind of soft. Uh, once they got rid of the offensive coordinator in Cincinnati, he significantly improved. Um, last year, he had the third most target share. He had over a thousand yards, 75 catches, eight touchdowns. Solid year. I, I just feel like when you had AJ Green last year, you didn't feel like you had a top 10 receiver. It just didn't, didn't feel like it. But he actually produced quite well. And now they added in Cordy Glenn to the offensive line. That was the biggest uh, problem with this offense last year, was the offensive line. So, they have the, the starting the, the season off fresh with a new offensive coordinator, a better offensive line, it's going to be a much improved offense. Then They may not win more games, but they're going to be better on offense. Uh, not even that, but Joe Mixon's going to be in the second year. Um, it's going to... I think the offense will revolve around Joe Mixon this year. That might be a hot take, but I think he's going to be pretty strong. Um, it's going to take a lot of pressure off of A.J. Green. There's just a lot of question marks. Uh, is Andy Dalton going to be good? You know, I, I don't think he's a good quarterback myself. Um, they even might try to go a different direction. I don't know. But my, my thing is, I think A.J. Green is going to be a, a, one of the safer picks this year that people are kind of backing away from. Uh, if I get A.J. Green in a second, I'm, I'm happy. Um, but now is where it becomes more of a, uh, I guess you could say, uh, riskier players to have in your top 10. 
but I think they're, they're just as deserving as these other guys. So number nine, I got T.Y. Hilton um, being picked 27th off the board, wide receiver 11. Um, T.Y. Hilton, I had him last year, and I'll tell you, I regretted drafting him. Uh, I had the hopes of Andrew Luck coming back. He didn't, obviously. But this year, Luck is back. He's, he looks strong in preseason. He looks strong at training camp, um, which is the key to success for T.Y. Hilton. Um, here, in a bigger thing than that is there's no other weapons on Indianapolis. Marlon Mack just got injured. We'll see how that comes out. But there's no other receiving weapons there. Uh, who's going to take away targets from him? I don't see anybody. Um, but here's a stat with Andrew Luck at quarterback with T.Y. Hilton in the game, okay? He averages per game 75 yards, eight and a quarter uh, targets per game, and a 40% chance to score a touchdown. But if you spread that over the course of the season, that's 1,200 yards, 132 targets, and over six touchdowns. Rock, solid, top 10 receiver. And I, I feel like if I can get him at the 2-3 turn, I will do that all day long. He's basically getting drafted in, in the middle to end of the third round, and I feel like you can actually reach on him because he's that much of a talent. Now, number 10 is my boy, Brandon Cooks. He's my sleeper pick of the year. Um, ADP is being picked 51st off the board. Um, wide receiver 23. Um, I think you can actually pick him a little bit later. Even though he's my number 10 receiver, don't overpay for the guy when you can get him in the fifth round, fourth round, you know. I, I'm all for it at that point. I'm not picking him in the third um, because I know I can get him later. But here's the thing about Brandon Cooks, right? So people always bring up the argument of, well, when he was in New Orleans, he was good because he had a Hall of Fame quarterback, Drew Brees. He goes to New England. He's good because he has Hall of Fame quarterback, Tom Brady. Now what's he going to do with Jerry Goff, who was not those guys, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> But here's something about Brandon Cooks, right? Because everyone's saying that how is he going to do good when you got Todd Gurley, you got uh, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, you got all these different guys that are going to get the ball. But two things, okay? Number one, he just signed that big contract, five year, $80 million extension. So the Rams want him to stay in LA. So they're going to build the offense around Gurley with Cooks. So I, I feel like it's not like Gurley and then Cooks. I feel that that type of money says Cooks and Gurley are our guys. But even bigger than that, he doesn't need a, a ton of targets on the year. So over the last three years, he has not had less than 1,082 yards and seven touchdowns in in either in any of the three seasons. But he hasn't had more than 84 receptions. So he doesn't need a, a hundred yards on, and a, or he doesn't need a hundred catches on the year to get his his volume. Or, <clears throat> he doesn't need a hundred catches on the year to get his numbers. He's, this guy can do it without getting uh, a lot of targets on him. And the thing about it is that this offense is going to be the number one offense in football. I understand that the the defense is, is improved as well. So they may not need to pass the ball as much. You, you, I can see where you're going with that argument. But the, Brandon Cooks is their number one receiving option on the number one offense in football. Show me how that doesn't result in numbers. So now I want to go ahead and bring in Jeremiah Hamilton. He want, he's going to go ahead and debate a couple points that he uh, is perceiving. You guys might have uh, in the comments. So we're going to go ahead and attack those now. All right, so Jeremiah, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. How about you, David? Pretty good. I, I actually got to stumble in here in the studio right as you we were finishing up that last pick and basically was going through our uh, feed and realized that there was three main people that people were upset that you left off this list, David. Okay, well, who's that? Well, number one, Larry Fitzgerald. Mm-hmm. He's one of the top receivers in the slot in the whole league. Yeah. He should be, I, I think because he's kind of the safety blanket for that team, a little higher on this list. Yeah, Larry Fitzgerald to me is solid. Um, a lot of people question whether or not he's going to be, be able to maintain the numbers he's been having due to his age. Um, but I got him at number 12. I mean, it Fitz could be in the top 10 for sure. Um, 
I just happen to think that some of these other guys have a higher upside. But where if it, for Fitzgerald, for for him to be worth what you have to draft him for, he has to be that top ten receiver, basically. You know, and so with some of these other guys, like for example Brandon Cooks, you pick him in the fifth round. Even if he just gets you the average numbers that he's had over the last three years, which is over a thousand yards on the year, that's you know that's good value. Like, he doesn't have to be that monster guy. Where Fitz is a little bit more of a risky player. Okay. Well, here's another one that's less of, less of a risk because he's a top re- receiving option for his team as well. Mm-hmm. With I think a better quarterback upside with Kirk Cousins that is Stephon Diggs. Yeah, I love Stephon Diggs, especially now that he has that contract extension. I mean, he's moving up my rankings, uh, for sure. I, I have him currently at number 13, but I think he might move up a couple of spots. I don't know quite into that top 10, but Stephon Diggs and that offense is going to be ridiculous. The only question mark I have about that offense is you got Kirk Cousins, right? Bring him in. They have Diggs and Thielen, Dalvin Cook, which we talked about in the running backs episode, and they, they got uh, Kyle Rudolph. Everyone across the, the, the world basically is saying that all these guys are going to produce. Are all of them really going to produce? That remains to be seen. Because, I mean, with, with the projections that people are coming out, you know, you got Stephon Diggs with 1,000 yards. You got Thielen with 1,000 yards. You got uh, uh, Kyle Rudolph with 800 yards, probably. Dalvin Cook with 1,300 yards. So, Sounds like Kirk Cousins is actually the pick you should go get. Exactly. Go get him. <laughs> who actually is my number five quarterback. And he should have been a lot higher. But that's that's to be debated. Yeah. So one more, but this one's more for uh, Raider fans out there. Mm-hmm. You sleeping on Amari Cooper? I think I, I might be sleeping on Cooper. Um, reason being is because... Gruden says he's going to be a top part of the offense this year. I agree. And I, 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 think, I think you will be. But here's the thing. They want to run the ball. You know, they want to give Marshawn Lynch as many carries as possible, in my opinion, of this new John Gruden offense, okay? So everything that's, that's happened last season with Marshawn Lynch, where he's getting 12 carries a game, that's out the window. And Marshawn Lynch, as the season went on, he got better every game he played. So that's something, too. He comes into this uh, offseason fresh, ready to go. He's not having to catch up to football speed, opposed to just being in shape. Um, not to mention, Jordy Nelson's getting a lot of good reports uh, out of training camp saying that he's looking like he's a couple years younger than what he really is. That could mean a high upside for him in fantasy, too, as a sleeper pick. Yeah. Um, it all depends on how the rapport with Carr goes. Uh, we'll definitely get to see in the third preseason game coming up. By the way, if you guys haven't already checked out any of our other videos here on Southern Pass Studios, go do so now because we have all the other fantasy shows so far, one through five receivers, one through uh, five running backs, and six one, through ten through, backs too. one through ten quarterbacks, mm-hmm. six through ten running backs, and today, of course, you got to see the six through ten receivers. Right. Uh, West Coast sports debacle goes on every week as well, usually. Sometimes we'll miss it if I have a, my daughter's birthday or, you yeah. know. Stuff that comes up in life, but otherwise we'll relatively be good about posting West Coast Sports Buckle from here on out. Uh, and on that show, we actually go into a little bit more details about Amari Cooper, some of the Raiders, Rams players, and well, you know, we have to cover 49ers and Chargers because well, they're there. They are in California, technically. Are they though? But are they? Yeah. Is LA really? Uh, yeah. It's San Francisco California. <laughs> no one will know. Stay tuned next week to find out. <laughs> You're on the fantasy sports tomorrow. I've been Jeremiah. I've been David. <laughs> Adios, <amigos. laughs> Bye.